So now we're going to build a Pareto chart to help us assess the quality of our company. With a Pareto chart, we are going to look at different types of quality issues. For example, here we have the type of defects uh, for a paint job on a car. With the Pareto chart, we look at the type of defects, we look at the number of occurrences of each type of defect, and we look at the percentage that each of these defects contribute to the total number of defects. This relates to the Pareto phenomenon, which tells us that 80% of our problems can be attributed to 20% of either our production process or, in this case, 20% of our defects. So if we can address the key, the biggest problems, then that takes care of most of the complaints, most of the issues, and then that is savings because we don't have to fix all of the defects, all of the quality issues all at once. It helps us know where to look and where to focus our time and our money. So the first thing we do here is we take our type of defects and we are going to sort them so that the defect that has the most number of occurrences is on top and the one with the least number of occurrences is on the bottom. So one way to do this is to simply right click and you can then choose to sort and we want to use custom sort. We use custom sort because if you pick one of the sorts that are already here or you use the sort that is in the uh, data ribbon, these are preset to sort by the first column. And we don't want to sort by the first column, we want to sort by the second column. So let's right click, let's select sort, custom sort, and let's tell it to sort by number. And we are going to sort largest to smallest because we want the defect that has the most occurrences on the top. And let's hit OK. So we can see that streaks have the most number of occurrences in terms of the paint jobs on these vehicles. Discoloration is second with 88 defects compared to the 112 that we see with streaks. The next thing we want to do is calculate a cumulative percentage. To do this, we need to know how many total defects there are. So we can use equals sum, open parentheses, then highlight all of the number of defects, close the parentheses, and we can see that there are a total of 395 defects in this example. To find the cumulative percentage, the first thing we do is we take 112 and we divide it by the 395. This tells us what percentage of the total streaks can account for. And we can go in and we can change this to a, be a percentage by going to the home ribbon and clicking on the percentage button. Now we want it to be a cumulative percentage. So when we add in discoloration, we're not doing 88 out of 395. Instead, we want to do 88 plus 112 divided by the 395. So as a cumulative percentage, we're seeing how much streaks and discoloration make up of the total. We, to do the scuffs, we would add up the 58 plus the 88 from discoloration plus the 112 from the streaks and divide that by the total. Okay. For chips, we're going to add the 56 for the chips plus the scuffs plus the discoloration, plus the streaks, and divide it by our grand total. For shine, we're going to add the number for shine, plus chip, plus scuff, plus discoloration, plus streak, close parentheses, and divide it by the total. You know you've done this correctly if the last number for your, cum your cumulative percentage is 1 because that should account for 100% of all of the defects. So we do bubble plus shine plus chip plus scuff plus discoloration plus streak, close parentheses, and we need to divide the whole thing 
by the grand total, and we can see we get 1. Just to clean this up, let's turn them all into pretty percentages. Now, to create our Pareto chart, we highlight our types of defects, our numbers, and our cumulative percentages. Then we insert, and we go in, and we are going to insert a column chart. Okay. Now, we want to make this chart nice and big, because you'll notice with this column chart that you can see there are very small little red uh, bars down here at the bottom. Those are the cumulative percentages, and they're so tiny because they're all less than 1. And our scale here is 0 to 120. So to make those cumulative percentages visible, and to turn this into a true Pareto chart, we need to change these columns that are in red to a line graph. So select the red columns, which is why you need your graph to be blown up real big. Then right click, make sure you got all the red ones, not just one. So this is the hardest part, trying to get them to show up. Then we need to right click, and we're going to tell it we want to change the graph type. So of course, I'm having trouble here getting them. If you are having trouble getting those red things, make your graph bigger so those red ones are easier to click on. Right click, go on to change series type. And when you're in change series type, so notice that for number, we have a clustered column. For cumulative percentage, we want to change that to a line graph, and we want to give it a secondary, a secondary axis so that we're not looking at very tiny numbers, so tiny we can't see on our scale. We want to pull it up, and so click on secondary axis. Click OK. So now that we have our Pareto chart, we can see streaks are the number one defect, discoloration are the second most, and we can see how the other defects compare. The line that we've added to our Pareto chart shows us that streaks alone account for just under 30% of the total number of defects. In fact, the number is about 28%. If we add in discoloration, we can see that streaks plus discoloration make up about 51% of the defects. So if we can tackle these two problems, we will have tackled more than half of our quality issues. So we can focus our efforts, our time, and our money on streaks and discoloration first. If you add in the scuffs, then you have tackled 80% of your total quality issues by just dealing with those three defect problems.